Hey everybody, welcome back to Movies with Mia. If you're new to the channel, hi! I'm Mia Tiffany, and here we are watching the greatest classic films throughout history. Today we are finishing our exploration of silent films, pre-codes, and comedies with the film To Be or Not To Be. Before we jump in, I'd like to shout out my Golden Oscar patrons. Guys, thank you so much for your continuous support of the channel. And if you're interested in becoming an exclusive VIP Tiffany Club member, then I suggest you check out that Patreon link, which is in the description box below. To Be or Not To Be was released in 1942, directed by Ernst Lubitsch, starring Carol Lombard and Jack Benny, with other notable performances by Robert Stack, Felix Broussart, Lionel Atwill, Stanley Ridges, and Sig Ruman and hopefully I said all of their names right. At this point, we are going to get into some historical background for those of you who want to jump right onto the film reaction, go for it. But for those of you who want to stay, we're going to get right into it. To Be or Not To Be was originally written by Ernst Lubitsch, who was kind of getting tired of the same formula of a comedy with a little bit of dramatic relief or a drama with a little bit of comedic relief. He wanted to see something new on screen. So he created To Be or Not To Be. Now, Lubitsch had the intention of financing the film through his production company, Ernst Lubitsch Productions. Unfortunately though, because of his box office flop titled That Uncertain Feeling, his company dissolved. Luckily, the project was later picked up by Alexander Korda, who at the time was the co-owner of United Artists. To Be or Not To Be was released on March 16th, 1942, and unfortunately, it was not met with high praise. All right, on to some interesting facts. So there were a lot of reasons why To Be or Not To Be was received negatively by audiences and critics, one of them being shortly after the film's release, one of the stars of the film, Carol Lombard, had unfortunately died in a plane crash. Now, while the country was mourning her death, World War II was in full swing. Nonetheless, Lubitsch was quite satisfied with the way that the film turned out, and he deemed it as one of his best works. So, I mean, as long as he liked it, right? <laughs> with that being said, I am so excited to get into To Be or Not To Be. This is my first time watching it. But before we do, y'all know the deal. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification to stay in the loop. All right, everyone, it is time to grab your snacks, grab your drinks, get cozy, and let's get in to To Be or Not To Be. This was her last film. I read that Carol really, really wanted Irene to do her costumes, and they said, yeah, we'll, we'll get her for you, which I thought was kind of cool. We're in Warsaw the capital of Poland. Suddenly something seems to have happened. People seem to be frightened, even terrified. The man with a little mustache, <laughs> Adolf Hitler. Oh boy. Look at everyone just, <laughs> oh my God. Is he by any chance interested in Mr. Maslowski's delicatessen? That's impossible. He's a vegetarian. <laughs> and yet he doesn't always stick to his diet. And why is he just walking in broad daylight? Right off the bat, we are already getting some some sensitive topics here. We have Wilhelm Kutze here. Send him in. He's I'll a child. Hitler. I'll hit I understand you want a little tank to play with, huh? But our Fuhrer decided to give you just what you want. Like he's Santa Claus or something? Oh, oh no. This is bad. But you are going to tell your father who gave it to you, aren't you, Wilhelm? Sure, our Fuhrer. He doesn't like him now, does he, Wilhelm? No, he doesn't. Heil Hitler. Hitler. Heil myself. <laughs> oh no! That's not in the script. That's Mr. not Bunsky. in the script. Well, this is a it's serious Carol. play, a realistic drama. Is that what you're going to wear in the concentration camp? Well, don't you think it's pretty? <laughs> no, no, that's terrible. I scream. Suddenly, the lights go on, and the audience discovers me on the floor in this gorgeous dress. That's a terrific laugh. You keep out of it. What do you mean by talking to my wife like that? Sorry, I lost my temper. Sweetheart, the dress stinks. The dress stinks. <laughs> He's like, sweetheart, the dress stinks. Come on. It's becoming ridiculous the way you grab attention. And if we should ever have a baby, I'm not so sure I'd be the mother. <laughs> I'm satisfied to be the father. Who made oh. you up? <laughs> to me, he's just a man with a little mustache. But so is Hitler. Wow. I'm sorry, but the balls on Lubitsch to make this movie in the midst of the tensions of World War II? The man has some guts, all right? That picture. That's what he should look like. But, but that picture was exactly with me. <laughs> And the picture's wrong too. <laughs> oh, I'm going out on the street and see what happens. <gasps> oh my God, please don't do that. 
And that's how Adolf Hitler came to Warsaw in August 1939. <laughs> May I have your autograph, Mr. Bronski? Mr. Bronski? <laughs> oh, yeah, you look like Mr. Bronski, not quite like the other guy. In Hamlet. Shakespeare must have thought of me when he wrote this. Have I not eyes hurt with the same weapon? If you prick us, do we not bleed? If you poison us, do we not die? Mesmerizing. <laughs> He was in, um, The Shop Around the Corner, huh? Oh, he's a little cool tonight. Not to me. Oh, I know. I'm giving a rotten performance. I always do when we quarrel. You were never better. I'd give you a kiss right now, but I'm afraid I might ruin my makeup. Oh, they're cute together. They're like a husband and wife acting duo. That's so sweet. Aren't they beautiful? Don't be casual. Who sent them? Joseph, sweetheart. Oh, my God. I, I love their, I I love their chemistry. But you get so unreasonable, so upset about little mm. things. Like the little thing in the second row. <laughs> Like the little thing in the second row. Oh my god. She has a little admirer. Lieutenant Stanislav Subinsky. I was right on it. He's a young aviator. Just a mere boy. Don't waste any more time with excuses. If you want to see him, see him while he's still young. Oh man. Interesting. She's like flattered by it. That's so cute. Dear Lieutenant. Well, you say, Manor. Unfortunately, my time is completely taken up. If you insist on seeing me. Come back to my dressing room. I feel like it's kind of scandalous that, like, she's married and she's calling back this young aviator to meet her, like, in her dressing room alone. Very scandalous. Just he, Hamlet, to be or not to be. Oh, my God. I just got, I just got that. To be or not S to soliloquy. be. That is. Oh, he got up. Oh, that's the worst. <gasps> Thank you, Mrs. Tudor, for receiving me. So you're the gentleman that sent me those lovely flowers. Tell me about yourself. I, uh, I just fly a bomber. Would you permit me to show you my plane? When shall I call for you? He's starstruck. I get it. I love the remastering of this version. It's like so clear. I had better meet you right at the airport. So he's going to take me up 10,000 feet in the air. As long as Tura doesn't find out. <laughs> After all, what a husband doesn't know won't hurt his wife. What a husband doesn't know won't hurt his wife. God, slick. With the dialogue. I'm loving this. It happened. What every actor dreads. Someone got up what, and left. What, darling? What? Someone walked out on me. Am I losing my grip? No, oh, of course, course not. not. But he walked out on me. Literally interrupted his soliloquy, okay? I'm afraid I have some bad news for you. This play might offend Hitler. Well, wouldn't well... that be too bad? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I'm sorry, gentlemen, but the order is final. What a, what a, like, you can dish it, but you can't take it, huh? To be or not to be. That is... This he left again. How disrespectful that he leaves again at the same time of Hamlet's soliloquy. I have so much to tell you. The other day on the plane, I saw you looking at me. I had the feeling you liked me. Well, of course. Well, what are we going to do with your husband? She's like, what? Tell him what? She's like, huh? Oh, no, 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 no. It, no, it's not like that, baby. I'm sure he'll realize the situation. Stanislav, you're really a darling, but you don't seem to realize that I'm a married woman. That's why I want to talk to your husband. But I love my husband. <laughs> you're funny. You don't know me. You know me from interviews? You must understand that I... Stay out of it. This is too late. war. Stanislav. Goodbye, Maria. Man alive, what are you don't talking you about? Don't you understand war? war? Oh, my gosh. The sirens. It's happening, babe. Wow, this just got so real. Oh, my God. And they're already bombing. Well, anyway, we don't have to worry about the Nazi play anymore. Talk about sensitive subject matter. But I feel like it was so, it was like abrupt like that. Warsaw destroyed for the sake of destruction. A tragedy with no relief in sight. As watching it from 2021, this, he's a genius. With that being said, I think it was a little too soon. If you prick us, do we not bleed? Just the if devastation. Us, do we not laugh? If you poison us, do we not die? Love how he, how they kind of redid that line in a very different setting. Like, this is very real and very fresh. But a new spirit had come over the people of Poland. Rebellion against suppression. The battle was on. V. Oh my god, like V for Vendetta. You can see Lubitsch's just sheer hatred for the movement during that time. We'll never be seated till Hitler's defeated. So cheer up, my lads, my son. Professor, are you by any chance going to Warsaw? That'll be risking your neck. Oh my goodness. I love how the how all the guys are in unison. 
I'd give my soul to be there for just one hour to see my mother. Why don't you tell me where I can reach your people? There is someone in Warsaw. What's the name of the lady? It's Maria Tura. Maria, I just met a girl named Maria. Oh my God, stop. West Side Story? No. Well then, what did you say the name was? Don't tell me you never heard of Maria Tura. She's famous. Yes. Here, Professor, is the name of my brother. I hope you can read the writing. I feel like it was just really like, like that. Like your whole world changes in the snap of a finger. He told us that he was going to Warsaw. Well, after all, we were all Poles together and nobody saw anything wrong in it. Otherwise, the boys wouldn't have given him all the addresses. When he took them? How could he do such a thing? <gasps> He's a freaking spy. Do you think he would harm those people? Now, if he delivers them to the Gestapo instead of to the underground, it means the complete destruction of our organization in Eastern Europe. Of course, of course, but I hate to condemn a man on such vague evidence. Ooh. They got entangled with a frickin' spy, bro. Go to Staluga's bookstore. Staluga will then inform the underground. But if someone happens to be in the store, don't mention anything. Just ask for a copy of Anna Karenina. Anna Karenina! Lubitsch must have really loved Anna Karenina. This is the second time he referenced that work. That's very interesting. I love this camera work. I always talk about that, but I really do. Just think it's so important. Oh! <laughs> Too bad we missed him. Too bad we missed him. That's what they said. He's really just doing the Lord's work. <laughs> Very dangerous that what he's doing. Could you by any chance Anna Karenina by Tolstoy? Here it is. Oh, it's much too expensive, I'm sorry. Goodbye, Goodbye gentlemen. Come again. Oh, I love the espionage. Oh, I love spy movies and anything spy. So he's a bad guy and he just went in there with all those freaking Polish soldiers trusting him to talk to their loved ones just to be a freaking rat. After him, what did he do? Exist? Yes, can I help you, gentlemen? We're looking for Mrs. Maria Tura. You have to come along with us. Why? I don't know why. This makes me visibly upset. I'm upset. It's just the audacity, really. It's the audacity for me, and I'll just leave it at that. Good evening, Mrs. Tura. Maybe he's a double spy. Good evening. What if that cigarette has poison in I it? I really must apologize for the manner in which you were brought here. There's a charming young man who gave me a message for you. To be or not to be. I wonder if he's a double agent, because... He just seems, I don't know, I feel like he's working on both sides. How do you do, Colonel Earhart? 10 o'clock tomorrow morning at Gestapo headquarters unless I hear from you tonight. Mrs. Turek, it's even more important that you choose the right side. What is the right side? The winning side. Hmm, the winning side? Why did she get all suddenly? She perked up real quick. Oh, you want me to be a spy? Oh, now, come, 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 that's rather a crude word. All you'd have to do would be to entertain a little. Life could be made... Uh... Very comfortable for you again, Mrs. Tura. And here's the deceiving part. He's so, like, calm, and he seems so nice, so you want to trust him. But then, he go gets to talking, and he's a freaking monster, all right? Don't trust this guy. All we're trying to do is to create a happy world. We're not brutal. We're not monsters. What? Now tell me, do I look like a monster? Yes, in sheep's clothing. Professor, please. Why don't you stay here for dinner? No. And before the evening is over, I'm sure you'll say, Heil Hitler. I would never. Please don't let me wait too long. I'm looking forward to it. So am I. He's disgusting. But she's an actress, okay? She's like playing up against him. Who's this random guy in my bed? Oh, he's probably crushed. To be or not to be. He wakes up to that. Oh my goodness, he's in a robe. Bro, is that my robe that you're wearing? What ill wind blew you into my slippers? Selecki's here. What? Selecki hasn't seen the Gestapo, not until morning. Does he know I'm here? No, believe it or not, he wants me to become a Nazi spy. Who wants you to become a Nazi spy? Selecki. <laughs> I love how the husband is just totally out of out of the loop. Is this Selecki a real danger to Poland? A catastrophe. He must be taken care of. I'm going to do it. But how? Where? How? I'm going to meet Herr Selecki at Gestapo headquarters. Oh, that's not a good plan, sir. He's a frickin' monster. A wolf in sheep's clothing. You know, it took a bit longer than I thought. I it's the dress the she was wearing in the beginning. It. And I haven't seen such food. Caviar, it still exists. Yes, on the winning side. You're not on the winning side. You lose. So annoying. And I think the best thing is to start your training as an agent with a glass of champagne. Shall we drink to uh, a 
blitzkrieg? No. Mm, I prefer a slow encirclement. She's better than me. I I would not be able to do this. I mean, ob- obviously, but also, <laughs> like, I wouldn't be able to act through this. I think you might have a boyish quality, and yet I don't know. Why don't you find out? I will. Write your name and I'll tell you everything about you. Oh. <laughs> Alexander Selesky. Perfect. She is just charming him right into a trap. He's looking at her lips. Oh, oh and I see his jaw job. clench. <gasps> Heil Hitler. <laughs> Heil Hitler. With a kiss. Wow, he's really playing. Lubitsch is really playing with a lot of different themes in this movie. I am Captain Moom of Colonel Earhart's staff. Sorry, there's been a last minute change in Colonel Earhart's plans and he'd like to see you immediately. I'm so sorry. Oh, don't tell me you have to leave. Yes, but I'll make it as quickly as possible. It's really evoking an emotion out of me for this particular situation in history. And I wasn't even alive, you know? Oh, that's important. Frickin' files. Get him. Gosh, you know, sometimes it just pays to be a freaking actor, okay? I won't be long. I love that he trusted her enough to just leave her in there. I mean, he completely underestimated her, and it's beautiful. Oh my god, I love it. She's creating a letter with his signature on it. Craziness. Hey, hey, just a moment. What's her name? Mrs. Jura. I'm sorry. Professor left no instructions. You'll have to wait until he comes back. But that's impossible. Are you serious? I'm sorry, there's nothing I can do about it. The sheer audacity. I just, I can't. So now she's in, like, a tizzy. If you wait just one moment, I'll announce it, Colonel Earhart. Thank you very much. It's a great pleasure to meet you, Professor. A very great pleasure. <laughs> How did he ever become a general? He's Goring's brother-in-law. Nepotism. Good old-fashioned nepotism. He brought the papers with him. Now remember, coolers, helpers in England. As soon as you find out, call me and I'll do the rest. All right. Now look, Tora, you're playing oh for Oh my our god, lives. this is... This so is a, oh, I get it. They're doing the play, but like to save Poland. Oh, that's so smart. Professor Selecki, I'm glad to see you. You know, you're quite famous in London, Colonel. They call you Concentration Camp Earhart. <laughs> yes, yes. That's terrible. What a plan. What a plan. I assume there are no supplementary documents. No, no, that covers everything. And I'm sending the duplicate on to Berlin the first thing in the morning. The, the duplicate? duplicate? No! God, please, no! There's a freaking duplicate? I'll be back in a moment. Very well. All right, I'll get this wrapped up. No, you can't. He still has some papers in his trunk. Get back there. Keep him there. We've tried to figure something out. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that made me laugh. He's going to have to try and stall him. Sit down, Professor. So they call me Concentration Camp Earhart. <laughs> I feel like he's going to find Maybe out. Maybe something you'd like to ask me. No, no, I can't think of anything, Colonel. Oh. I, lo- I really love Jack Benny in this in this role. He's funny, but it's not overpowering where he's goofy. He really is a comedic constant, and I really like that they casted him. We got it. Here, take this gun. Put it in your pocket. No, you take him back to the hotel. All right. And then you shoot him. All right. What'll happen to me? They'll shoot kill him. me. We're going to keep our fingers crossed. Good. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. <laughs> We're going to keep our fingers crossed. Thank God this is b- before the time of, like, social media. Because he would have been found out immediately. If he was a famous actor, come on. Colonel, unless there's something urgent, I'd like to relax a little. Oh, Mrs. Tura. Isn't she a husband? Oh, yes, but what does it matter? This is very interesting. He's going to freaking... He's going to get him. How did you happen to get in touch with him? <laughs> you see, there's a young Polish flyer in England. I think his name is Sobinski. Uh-huh. Uh, what was the message? And I had to swear to this young Romeo not to tell the husband. Hmm. And yet he's telling the husband. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, well, uh, what was the message? <laughs> to be or not to be. To be... I'm going to arrest this Maria Tura. <laughs> he only cares about his... As if his wife is being faithful. Forget about her. There's nothing mysterious about her. She's just a cheap little... The only one that has to worry about all this is the lady's husband. None of my concern. But it should be, Mr. Turin. <gasps> he gave himself away. Come on. Now get over that door and tell your friends to clear away from there. You sure you won't change your mind? Very well, Mr. Tora. No. Long live Poland! Oh, he didn't get shot. It was the pe- it was the guys in there. What the, what the, I don't know. Oh, my God. <laughs> he's between the... Oh, he's between the rows of chairs. Can they not find him? What is going on? Ah! 
Got him. Got you. Dang. Oh my God, that is so scary. Professor Seletsky. Professor Seletsky isn't here. Do you mind if I wait here for the professor? Good night, professor. Oh. <laughs> Good night. Oh my God. Oh my God. How are they gonna get her? <sighs> the soldier is in there. What is he gonna do? I'm Captain Schultz of Colonel Earhart's staff. Glad to meet you. Ah, Mrs. Tura. Thought you had left. How is Professor Seletsky? Absolutely dead. <laughs> That's a great line. Absolutely dead. There has been a change in the colonel's plans. You're not going to take him away. I'm sorry, but the colonel is expecting the professor now. Oh. Those are my orders. Oh my god, so now he has to pretend to be the freaking professor. Oh, sweetheart. Darling, what'd you do with Sabinski? Oh, that's all so unimportant now. Don't you realize you're going right into the hands of the Gestapo? Oh, wow, they really made him look like Stilinski. Fantastic makeup. I've got to know. Did you tell that fellow to walk out of my soliloquy? Oh, Did you sweetheart. tell that fellow? If I shouldn't come back, I forgive you what happened between you and Sabinski. But if I come back, it's a different matter. <laughs> oh, I really hope he comes back. I really like him. Well, Professor, at last we meet. I can't tell you how happy I am to breathe the air of the Gestapo again. A very old friend of yours is coming to Warsaw. The Führer. Oh my god. This ruse is going to... Mm, I'm scared for him. Uh, Colonel, you're quite famous in London. You know what they call you? Concentration Camp Earhart. Oh, they do, do they? <laughs> I thought you would react just that way. <laughs> he like literally just played him. What about the underground movement? I have the name of the leader of the whole underground movement. Bogoslav Ravansky. Send Captain Charles in. So they call me Concentration Camp Earhart. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and now he's gonna do the, repeat that same line. What's his name? Ravansky. We shot him two days ago. I risked my life to get the key man of the underground movement, and just when we're ready, it's sabotage, sabotage, sabotage! <laughs> I will send that professor. He's really holding his own right now. I would have been terrified sitting there. You know, there's always something wrong with a man who doesn't drink, doesn't smoke. You mean our Fuhrer? Oh, no, no, please, Professor. I hope you won't. Why should I ruin you again? Well, I'd like to get out of here as soon as possible. Is he ever just going to not be playing... The professor? Is this his life now? I'll make a reservation for you. That's fine. You better make that two reservations. Two? I made a discovery. A certain Mrs. Tura. If you say no, it's no. All right, I call you at the hotel. There are literally two Polish actors pulling this entire sham on these Gestapo soldiers. Like, that is amazing. Mrs. Tura, I sent for you. And I'm very grateful. Professor Siletsky is dead. I had an appointment with him this afternoon. He was due here any minute. Oh my god, so if he comes, that's a bad that's a bad thing. I want you to know that your ties with us are by no means broken. I might have something for you right here in Warsaw. <gasps> I would have to know you a little better. That is my duty and if I may say my pleasure. Uh everyone all these guys are trying to get at her. She's married. Jeez. Hello. Oh, good morning, Professor Siletsky. I He's like How? <laughs> oh no. Oh, you will be a little late. Yes, I understand. Oh, no. Oh, my God. Now everything's scaring me. He's lost. They found the body in the theater. They know everything. What? 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 I'm going to kill him. I'm going to kill him. You've got to do something. You've got to help him, Robert. Do something. I love the, the cacophony of noises that of voices that it's pr constant in this film. Like a bunch of people in a crowd talking at once. How's the now they know doing, that yeah? he knows. Would you mind stepping into my living room? Thank you. It's his dead body. Wow. That is a freaking scene. He didn't even notice it yet either. He's like, oh my God. <gasps> what is he doing? I try to open up a conversation with your friend in there, but he <laughs> seems to be dead. He seems to be dead. <laughs> he is playing this so well. There seems to be a slight resemblance between me and your late friend. You can kill him, cold blood, but you cannot pull a man's beard. Oh, <laughs> it's a fake beard. He's an imposter. I love that that was the only thing that convinced him. Like, didn't even do fingerprints, nothing. Where's the house office? Are you crazy? He is, he is Professor Selecki. <gasps> Here is a man with a beard, and you didn't even pull it. Oh, they're the they're the actors. Oh, I keep forgetting. They're the actors that came in and saved him. Hitler, of course, will be sitting in the royal box tonight. There'll be soldiers in the corridor guarding Hitler's box. If we can manage that Greenberg suddenly pops up among all those Nazis... It'll get a terrific laugh. Ooh, the plan is coming together. Very exciting. Excellent. Fantastic. Zabinski, it's time to go. Yes, he looks very good. 
Yeah. If you shouldn't come back. Then Sabinsky won't come back either. <laughs> Goodbye, darling. I love them. I think that they have really good character chemistry together. Soldiers. They're all going into the gentleman's lounge. I'd be so terrified, but also so determined. How did you get here? I was born here. Now what made you decide to die? Him. What does he want from Poland? Aren't we human? Have we not hands, organs, senses? Mm. Oh, wow. That was the, the line that he used in the beginning. Hurt with the same weapons, subject to the same diseases. If you prick us, do we not bleed? If you poison us, do we not die? That was a moment of raw emotion from not only the people that had to go through this, but I think also Lubitsch. That was very a, a very real moment, and I felt it. It is my duty to advise you to leave immediate to the airport. Yes, sir. We have to make a stop on the way. I'll tell you where. The railroad station. The underground is still alive. Oh, my God. Oh, that was the, the rebels, right? <sighs> There's so much tension. Colonel, I don't like to be impolite, but I have an appointment. All right, I'd write you there. Thank you, but you don't understand. Someone is coming. Ah, there's nothing to worry about. Mrs. Tura, consider yourself in the arms of the Gestapo. That sounds so comforting. Oh, my God. Please, please go, Colonel. Please leave. I, I, I can make life worth living for no, you. No, I'm good. I, I can give you extra butter rations. Colonel, please go. Maria. <gasps> oh, my God. <laughs> How do you know? My Fiora! My Fiora! <laughs> she runs out. Perfect escape. Uh, He's gonna have a heart attack. Uh, Did he shoot himself? Uh, Those Schultz! So they duped everyone. Jump! Halitla! Halitla! Two very obliging <laughs> Scotland. Oh my god! <laughs> oh no! They're like, it's, it's him. And I was very ably assisted by my colleagues. Thank you, my friends, for everything you did, oh, as little as it may have been. <laughs> Excuse me? It's like the play of a lifetime. Fantastic performance. And after all, we are in the country of William Shakespeare. He wants and to play Hamlet. Oh my God. All these people watching. He's like, you better not get up, bro. I, I, you better not do it. Break down that soliloquy, baby. To be... Or not to be. That it? <laughs> Someone still got up. Oh my god. Oh, that was good. That was really good. Wow. Fantastic, fantastic film. Um, definitely a film ahead of its time, for sure. I really enjoyed that. There was just so much to play with in this film. I mean, the fact that it was so blended with with comedic scenes but then also this re very real feeling of of like pain and, and anger and anguish over what's going on in the in um, Europe at that time I think it's no surprise that Ernst Lubitsch is just absolutely a filmmaker a mastermind a genius who inspired so many filmmakers after him so yeah I I think I want to give that one a 10. I want to give that one a 10 out of 10. Stellar performances, funny, heartfelt, you know, heartbreaking. It was amazing. I, I think it was fantastic. Thank you guys so much for watching it with me. All right, everyone, that does it for this video. As always, if you liked it as much as I did, please give it a thumbs up. Also, if you want to become an official member of the Tiffany Club, then I highly encourage you to hit that subscribe button and that bell notification to stay in the loop. If you want a full reaction to this film, it is up on Patreon, available exclusively to our Golden Oscar patrons. And in the next video, we are beginning a new series on the channel. So we are going to be reviewing some of the most alluring on-screen character chemistry in film. If you have any recommendations of any classic Hollywood films, we do have a recommendation form. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Please stay safe and healthy out there, and I will see all of you in the next video. Bye, everyone. To Be or Not To Be was originally written by Ernst Lubitsch after he wanted a Felix Bressart, Bressart, like dessert, Bressart. Ooh, I have to sneeze. Ooh, it's coming, it's coming. <coughs> Ew. At the time was kind of getting tired of the same formula, form, formula, formula, and unfortunately it was not met with high, pre, blah, blah, blah.
<laughs> I can't say praise. <laughs> Everything that's going wrong right now is all, it's because it's late, that's why. Okay. So there were a lot of reason, reasons, <laughs> and let's get in to, and let's get in to to be or not to be. I said to to, to to be. We will be reviewing the la 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 la. I just want to like say it as one word, the whole entire sentence. That ending was rough, but it's okay.